Welcome to Get the Balance Right, a podcast for creative entrepreneurs and firm owners looking to grow their business in a healthy, sustainable way. I'm your host, Heather Zeitzwolf. I'm a CPA and I serve this community with coaching and profit advising. Please join me as I talk with leaders in digital media, branding, advertising, design, marketing, and SEO. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Get the Balance Right Podcast. This is Heather Zeitzwolf, your host. Today, my guest is Annalise Warren. She is the founder of the Marketing Mentor Program and the host of the Mum Style Business Podcast. She's from Australia. Uh, Don't worry, I don't use a terrible accent with her. And I didn't ask her embarrassing questions like, do you know about in excess and do you listen to men at work? I really wanted to ask her those things because I'm a child of the 80s. And I love that stuff, but I didn't talk about that. Instead, we talked about her business and how she does marketing. We also talked about things like imposter syndrome, being shy, and lowering the bar just to put yourself out there into social media. All right, get out your pencils because there's a lot of juicy nuggets in this episode of the podcast. Annalise, welcome to Get the Balance Right podcast. I'm so excited to meet with you. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you are down in Australia. The start of the Great Ocean Road. And it's very early in the morning there. It is, but I work with the US a lot. So this is my normal recording time slot. And I've got three little kids. So before they wake up is perfect. Why don't we start with, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your company? Sure, I'd love to. My husband and I started a marketing agency three and a half years ago now because we had two kids at the time and we were living in the city, which is about two hours from here, from the coast. We knew that because we'd grown up on the coast, we wanted our kids to do that as well. So by the time it was ready for kinder, we started to make the move and I requested flexi time from work and that was declined. So I quit (laughs) and my husband, who's a carpenter actually, so like a builder, a contractor, I think you guys call them. He was going to build our house and we knew he couldn't be on the tools for someone else as well as be building our house. And so he retrained and learned how to build websites and do SEO and Google ads. We started our business from my in-law's house, kitchen table, just the two of us. (laughs) And now we have a team of eight going really, that's going well. And about a year in, I started talking to other mums who wanted what we had created, which was we're both working from home. We had a successful business. We could work around the kids. And I started mentoring mums in business on how to DIY because it just to hire an agency or even a freelancer really wasn't viable for these women who didn't want to build an empire, who just wanted to be home with their kids and have an extra $500 to $1,000 a week coming in. I started mentoring them in a very casual basis on how to do marketing. And that has evolved into the marketing mentor program where we don't just now work with moms. We work with small business owners and they get access to our agency team to help them DIY their own marketing. So we still have the agency and now we help small business owners DIY as well. It all always starts around a kitchen table, it seems. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> it was squishy. <laughs> squishy. What was squishy about it? Because we had sold up and we didn't, we were still building our house. The kids were in one room. We didn't have any of our furniture. There was no office. My brother-in-law was living there. So it was where we had. We didn't have any, no fancy setup, but that's okay. That's great. I think everybody can relate to that. I saw on your website that you have, I don't know if it's a mastermind group, but you serve women that are geared towards six figures. What is that about? So primarily the people that come into the group now, Marketing Mentor Program, women who want a six-figure business is generally the people that, that we help. But we have men in there. We have husband and wife teams. We have a whole gamut of people, but Generally, that seems to be it inside the marketing mentor program. If people want to take it a step further and add that extra six figures, add, then they can do one on one coaching with me. Sometimes there's availability. <laughs> Currently, not. I'm actually having another baby in a couple of months. And so that has, we've pulled back on that one, but maybe in 2021, that might be. 
back on the cards. Are you a creative entrepreneur who is bootstrapping their business? This is Heather Zeitzwill from Zeitzwill Accounting and Get the Balance Right podcast. I'm here to help you get clarity around your numbers. If you're dazed and confused when it comes to taxes and bookkeeping and you can't figure out where all your money is going, get ready to take your bootstrap business to the next level. I'm offering different bootstrap packages that can help you do just that. To learn more, go to getthebalancerightpodcast.com forward slash bootstrap to set up your free discovery meeting with me. That's getthebalancerightpodcast.com forward slash bootstrap and set up a free discovery meeting with me and start getting radical with your numbers. There seems to be this growing movement of women having babies and empowering that side of themselves where, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and a mom at the same time. And it seems like you're serving that audience with your podcast. Can you talk about your podcast? Sure. So I run the Mum Style Business Podcast. And I think... It's so great. I love so much the time that we're living in right now. We're recording this in COVID, so that sounds ridiculous to say. But in terms of technology and being in this age, because when I was going to school, so I'm 33, so I'm not. We're still not talking that long ago. When I went to school, it was the, it was very much still where I was from, that you went to school, you went to university, you went and got a nine to five job and that's you work until you're 55, 65, and then you enjoy your life. It just doesn't have to be like that. And when that finally clicked for me and I realized that I could make it happen and the difference that made for me and my family to be able to get up at 5.30, do a couple of hours of work, be mum for a few hours, drop them off. Do you know what I mean? And just have work in the morning a bit, in the afternoon a bit, at night a bit if I wanted to have that flexibility and then have the income coming in that I choose and on my terms made such a big difference to quality of life that I really want more women to realize that they can have that for themselves because so many just didn't. And so many of my friends were thinking, oh, you can do that, but I can't. And that's so not the case. We can have both. And I think life is too short to be trying to, you know, in a job that you hate just for the money or for the the pension that you're going to get at the end of it. Or I know in Australia, I've got friends who have government jobs that keep them just because they get extra superannuation, which I think is like your 401k kind of thing. Life's too short and we can, there's no reason why with an internet connection, a laptop and an iPhone, we can't run a really successful six or seven figure business. There's just no reason why not, if that's what you want. I miss the boat on having kids, but now when I look back, I thought, oh, why didn't I start my entrepreneurship a lot earlier. I think we all think that when was the best time to start was 10 years ago, (laughs) but (laughs) the next best time is today. (laughs) I want to talk about branding on one of your videos was about personal branding, about lowering the bar. Could you explain a little bit about what personal branding is and what that means to lower the bar? I'm assuming that's just push yourself and putting yourself out there. Exactly. Yes, definitely. So personal branding is what it sounds like. For example, our agency is custom build marketing, and we could make that all about a brand that didn't have a face. Or we can, my husband and I can be the face of that and people can not see a brand, not see a polished brochure and a building and all of that, but they actually see people and people buy from people that, you know, you go to that cafe because the waiter remembers your name, remembers your order, is really nice to you. Even maybe next door might have slightly better food, but you go to the person who makes you feel good, who you you connect with. And it's the same with us. And I think even it's, it's the same with online business. And I think even more so as the barrier to entry is so low and more and more people are joining the online marketplace and more and more people are realizing how they too can have a successful online business, that our personal brand, our values, who we are, what we stand for and why we do things differently is going to be the thing that attracts the right people to us because Millennials are buying more and more based on values and 
that is the thing that makes you different because I'm not, there's, you know, a million and one women teaching marketing, but there's not a million and one women with my story, with my approach, with the commitment to transparency, the, the, all of those things that make me and the way that I talk, the way that I teach, that's the only thing that differentiates me because digital marketing is digital marketing. We have to be ourselves and present that to the world. And I'm not saying show the world what you ate for breakfast and what underwear you're wearing, like unnecessary. (laughs) If you want to go for it, but you need to choose which bits of yourself you are going to expose so that people can get to know you and like you and trust you and then decide whether they're your people or they're not. And that's fine. We can't work with everyone anyway. So it's better that people count themselves in or out. And in terms of lowering the bar for me, I didn't get started with video straight away in my business, even though I knew that would be pretty powerful. And the same with having my face on things on, (laughs) on my social media, on the website, because that's not what I do naturally. My personal feed is not filled with selfies. On my wedding day, I I thought, oh my gosh, now everyone's going to stare at me (laughs) because I'm the bride. And that's not my natural inclination is to be the center of attention at all. So it was very much, I had to force myself because I knew that was what was going to help my business move forward. That was going to help me connect with the people that I wanted to connect with. Done is so much better than perfect because it's the action piece that is going to drive our business forward. I was doing a collaboration and so I committed to a weekly video show on their channel and I was terrible at public. I used to physically shake when I got on a stage. Video wasn't much better And I just had to be short and sharp and not watch it back, not look at myself, just do it in one take. Well, now I can, but not so much back then, but try my best to not, you know, not think about it too much and just put it out into the world and really then rub off those kind of dodgy edges and slowly get better. And I think that's what we have to do in order to, a lot of us are waiting until we establish the skills before we start or waiting until we feel confident before we take the action. But it just doesn't work like that. It's like saying, I'm going to lose the weight before I do the exercise or before I join the gym. Like it's <laughs> it's unlikely to work. And so we just have to lower the bar, not expect perfection from ourselves, be really grateful that at the start, not many people are going to be watching or listening anyway, and just get better, be okay with sucking a little bit, being a little bit terrible to get your message out into the world. If your business is based on service and if your business is based on that feeling a need for someone, then how can you not? And putting the putting that perspective and the focus on the the people that you're serving and not on yourself helps to shift that perspective a little bit and say I'm I'm really robbing my audience of this how to thing or this inspiration or whatever it is, if I don't put this out into the world and if I'm worried about how my hair looks or how someone might comment on what I'm wearing, am I really focusing on the right thing? What about people that are not only shy, but maybe they have imposter syndrome? Do you have to help your clients overcome this when you're working with them? Yeah. And it's, it comes back to mindset. I think mindset over mechanic mindset is the foundation of everything. And, and you just have to own it. Obviously you started your business for a reason. And hopefully you started it with a base of service and seeing a need to fulfill. If you didn't, then maybe you need to go back and (laughs) question what you're doing and look at what you're doing and think about, is this helping making people's lives better or easier or contributing to something in some way? And then owning it. And you're never going to be the top. Only one person can be the best, right? So there's a whole lot of people that aren't the best, but there's always going to be somebody three steps behind you. And there's always going to be someone that needs your style of presenting of your, you know, that needs you. There's always going to be someone that needs you that is further behind you. So speak to that person and really own the experience that you have, because you wouldn't be doing it if you didn't feel like 
you could do it or you had it in you. And if you think that a carpenter can become a web developer, if there was ever going to be a chance for serious imposter syndrome, that was probably going to be it. So just own it and do the mindset work, do the the gratitude work in the morning, really think about why you're doing it and what you have to offer and then put it out into the world. What is the gratitude? What is that about? I think if we come back to what we are grateful for and we be grateful for the journey that we're on, then it just puts us in a bit of a different place in terms of our thinking. And then we come from that place of gratitude. And so we are more generous with everything that we have as well, including our time and resources and skills and all of that. That's great. Yeah. I like to remind myself I have in my daily to-do list, it has a, a gratitude section where I'm supposed to write something in. Beautiful. I want to talk to you about your social marketing method on your website. What is that all about? You said it it doesn't have to do with fancy sales funnels and all of that. So the social marketing method is what we have called what we started doing for our clients who didn't want to invest in ads. Because when you're getting started, a lot of the time you don't have a whole heap of funds to invest in advertising and you want to know what's working potentially first before you do invest in doing that. And I think the barrier to a lot of marketing is that it it gets so complicated. There's these webinar funnels and you've got to do these 97 slides and, you know, email sequences of 20 emails and the tech that links the database to the this, to the, it just gets, for, for someone who is, a graphic designer or an accountant or something who just wants to share their gifts with the world. This is, it's just too much. And so it doesn't have to be that complicated when you're getting started. If you're a service-based business, which is primarily who we work with, we do have some e-commerce, but primarily it's service-based businesses. Then this is the method that we recommend that can get people started in a way that it isn't super overwhelming. Really, it comes down to using social media because we need to be able to move people down the buyer journey. We need to make them aware of us before they can be interested, before they can want what we have, before they can say yes to our product or service. And then ultimately we want to close the loop and have them refer us as well. That would be nice. In order for someone who has no idea who you are to come into your sphere And then we need to think about what is it that they need to know and think and believe about us in order to say yes to our offer. And our offer is ideally going to be high value because that's going to be better for us in terms of running our businesses. But it's also going to be better for our client because if we are solving a need, then it's unlikely that this need has just popped up and they have the need and we are going to solve it. It's probably that this need has been around for a little while. They've tried a few things and they're looking for the ultimate solution. And the ultimate solution is not going to be $47. It's just not. And people are okay with that. I teach my clients to create their offer around that ultimate solution. So forget about money and time and everything for now and think if this is the person I'm serving and this is the problem I'm solving, what is the ultimate solution? What's the best way to get them to their goals? And the marketing mentor program for me was that thing because I'm helping people who don't have a great idea about marketing or do know marketing but don't have the structure and the support and the accountability And so the structure that we've put together was my version of this ultimate, I thought this is the best way that I can get people from A to B. And so think about what that is for you. And that's going to be your offer. And that's going to be where we're leading people to. Hey there, this is Heather. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And if you are, if you wouldn't mind, please hit the subscribe button now. That way you'll never miss an episode. All right, now back to the podcast. So if we go all the way back to the start of the buyer journey now, and we're getting pretty nitty gritty here. We're getting so much into this podcast episode. Wow, it's great. So awareness, how are we going to make 
them aware of us, how are we going to get in front of their eyeballs? Generally, it's now social media. Unless we're using Google ads or SEO, it's probably going to be social media. And that's where we need to start. And it's all about content creation and connection. I train my clients to create one big piece of content every week, ideally, and then break that up into little pieces. And that becomes their social media. So the one big piece of content can be whatever you can be a podcast. It can be a video. It can be a blog because not everyone wants to do video and that's fine. And not everyone's great at video. Not everyone's great at speaking. Not everyone's great at writing. You do you pick your format, do one piece of content the content is going to move them down the buyer journey. It is going to help. What do they need to know and think and believe about you to say yes to your offer? And that's what your content is around. It is teaching them something. It is inspiring them. It is talking about your values. It's not selling your thing. It is value. (laughs) And so we're creating that one piece. We're breaking it up over social media. And then the social marketing method part of things is also about connecting. Who are we connecting with strategically? Who are we engaging with? How are we building out based on collaborations and and networking and getting in the messaging with people and all of that? There's, we've got a full system to it, which we probably, we don't, we definitely don't have time for, but basically it's go and outreach to people and actually talk to people on social media, be social on social media. So have the content piece by having one big piece and breaking it up it's so much simpler. You can bulk create this and plan it and just use software to schedule it out. And then spend 15 minutes a day connecting with people legitimately, being a nice person on social media and leading people into a consultation for your offer. It works so well because your content does 90% of the selling for you. I was on a consultation call yesterday And I was saying, do you have any questions? She said, no, I just wanted to talk to you. You know, (laughs) I'm going to be signing up this afternoon. And so it was a chat about our kids. The consultation was a a talk about our kids because my content had already sold her. I had done a good job in this case about moving this person from awareness to interest, desire to taking action. And now she's going to be in the program. It's a really powerful method that requires time, but not financial investment to market yourself. I really like that idea of the streamlining it just to one offer. That makes it so much easier, it seems, to tackle all the social media and how you're going to streamline your ideas for a blog. Because I'm always like, how am I going to come up with an idea for a blog? There's so many things I can write about. But do you work with your clients as far as if they have an idea, do you keep in mind like what the SEO is behind that? Or do you want them to just, just be more authentic and not worry about those things? We, we definitely do incorporate it and we have the keywords. And if it's a location-based business, then definitely it's a really high priority. Like with our home builders, SEO is massive because they're location-based and they're going to be really specific and it's, they've got a very small group of people to work with. Then, <laughs> If it's a business like mine, then we think about SEO less because realistically for me to appear on the first or second page for SEO or for marketing mentor or business coach, like it's pretty unlikely. So it's less of a focus. You mentioned that you work sometimes with people in the United States. I was curious as far as, do you see any difference between marketing in Australia and marketing in America? Are there sort of cultural differences besides some of the the lingo that you were using? And do you see much of a difference or is it all blend? I think it's the same. I think we really probably take a leaf out of your book, to be honest. I think we're probably following along a little bit. But yeah, I think it's the same. People are people. And we work with the UK. We've worked quite broadly. And ultimately, humans are humans and we have the same needs. And yes, there's going to be the cultural nuances and and all of that and potentially things that are going to be seen too forward. But generally, we're becoming this really intimately connected world through technology and connecting as people, which I think is fantastic. It is fantastic. I think it's incredible. Like, look at the conversation we're having now from other sides of the world. I love it. I know, me too. 
Your program is a DIY type thing, but you do give guidance and support and all of that. But do the people use like a certain technology to create their posts or uh, is there certain types of technology that you would recommend for people that maybe they don't have much of a graphic design background that they could utilize? We can, we always make recommendations on what we have used and what our experience in terms of graphic design. I think most people are on the Canva bandwagon really. And why not? It's really easy. It can upload straight to Facebook. Like it's got lots of templates. It, it's great. But the marketing mentor program, it's not a course and it, there's nothing prescribed. It is, we have a bank of resources of videos and how to's and you know how to get on podcasts, for example, how to add your Facebook pixel to your website. There's a whole bank of videos, but it's more buffet style, not here's module one, here is module two, because everyone coming in is at a different place. We even have marketing teams coming in or marketers coming in who are coming in for help with their clients. And that's great. If we can help, perfect. We've got the portal, but then we have calls with the experts in our team. So for example, Mondays, you get to speak to my husband and he's talking all about Google ads and SEO and and all of that. And there's no set format for the call. It's just everyone logs on and we answer questions. And so we can be talking about what is SEO if someone's new and they, or they've just learning, we start talking, do some, doing some keyword brainstorming or show them websites where they can do that. Or he might be logging into the back end of someone's Google ad account and actually remote controlling their screen and helping them with their data or helping them set something up. So it's just, we are there. And if you have a question on that topic, there's an expert there that will actually answer your question. So it's not just here's this course, go and have some fun. Thanks so much for your $2,000. It's, and then you're not left out there on your own. The whole point was that it started helping women who had never even, I didn't know how to do a, a Facebook post. And now it's not just that and it's grown and we help a lot broader range of people, but it still makes professional marketing more accessible because to get a good freelancer just for Facebook ads, for example, without the web development side, when I was doing that, I was charging 1500 US dollars a month. And that's just not viable to then, you then have to pay a web developer, you then have to pay for ads. For lots of businesses getting started, those kind of numbers just aren't achievable. We really wanted to just make professional, legitimate, like great marketing accessible to the everyday person who wants to build a business to have that freedom and for their family or for themselves. That's great. It's been so delightful having you on my show. I just want to wrap up and ask you how people can get a hold of you and how they can work with you. The website is AnnaliseWarn.com. Otherwise, the Social Marketing Method Facebook group is where I hang out. I'm there live on every Tuesday, which I think it's Tuesday morning, your time. Yes, it is. Oh no. Um, Anyway, Tuesdays. I'm live every Tuesday and come and hang out with with me there and send me a message. I like to chat and get to know who's in the group. So I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm live in there every week. Sometimes we have interviews. We do workshops every few months in there. We've just wrapped up one on how to get great leads. Come join me there. I would love to get to know you. Great. That's wonderful. Congratulations also on having another child. Thank you so much. Hey, this is Heather. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast. If you found value in the show, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a rating on iTunes or just simply tell a friend about it. And if you're interested in learning more about my profit advising and coaching, please set up a discovery call by using the link in the show notes. All right. Thanks so much and see you next time.